Hi, I am Divya Jyoti Das and uh, this is For the Love of Physics. So today I have a very interesting problem that demonstrates how we can apply the concept of length contraction or time dilation in solving the problem. You see, many times students ask me, Sir, uh, when should we apply length contraction and when should we apply time dilation? You see, both length contraction and time dilation are relativistic phenomena, yes. But depending upon the observer, we may apply one phenomena and not the other. And I have the perfect problem today in front of you, which I am going to solve using the perspective of two different observers, using two different phenomena, but getting the same result at the very end. So this is a question that came in jest examination jest 2015 it goes something like this the distance of a star from the earth is 4.25 light years as measured from the earth a spaceship travels from the earth to the star at a constant velocity in 4.25 years according to the clock on the ship what is the speed of the spaceship in units of the speed of light this is a very interesting problem you see because first of all the distance turns out to be 4.25 light years then distance divided by time gives us the speed of light so it looks like at a first glance that the speed of the spaceship is the speed of light which is not the case Okay, this is not the case here. As it turns out, when you an object starts moving at very high speeds, uh, the time periods that they measure and the distances that they measure are not the same when you do the same measurements with respect to a rest frame of reference. And therefore, let us look at what happens in this particular example from the perspective of two different observers. So we're going to look at the perspective of an observer from the Earth frame of reference. And we are also going to look at the perspective of an observer from the spaceship frame of reference. And as you will see, the phenomena which is happening in this case depends on which observer we are talking about. So as it turns out, for the Earth frame of reference, the phenomena of time dilation is in effect. While for the spaceship observer, the phenomena of length contraction is in effect. But the question asks us, what is the speed of the spaceship? And we can calculate that from either of the two observers perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the question, but from the perspective of both the observers in the examination, you just need to do any one of them. But just for the sake of, you know, making it interesting, just for the sake of you guys, if you want to distinguish between how to apply the concept of time dilation and when to apply the concept of length contraction, you'll see the differences here. So let us first look at with respect to Earth, and by Earth I mean an observer in Earth, and similarly on the right hand side I am going to do the calculations with respect to spaceship, and by spaceship I mean some kind of an observer or a measuring device on the spaceship. So how are the calculations different for both these two observers? Well, it's simple. What do we need to calculate in the problem? We need to calculate the speed of the spaceship. To calculate speed, what do we need? We need distance versus time. So let us look at the perspective of both these two observers and what they do know. So with respect to an observer in Earth, what is the distance? Well, the distance is already given to us. The distance with respect to an observer in Earth is 4.25 light years. What about the time? with respect to an observer on earth that is not given in the question so that is a question mark all right what about with respect to the spaceship with respect to the spaceship what is the distance between the earth and the star well here is what happens is that because the spaceship is moving the length that you measure with respect to the earth is not the same as the length measured by the spaceship length contraction happens Length contraction or Lorentz contraction is when you measure the distances between two different points in space uh, when you are at rest and when you are in motion. So when you are in motion, the distance you measure with respect to two points 
appear to be contracted. So the distance measured by the spaceship is not going to be 4.25 light years. It's going to be contracted. So we don't know what it is. I'm going to find out. And what about the time period? The time period is given that according to the spaceship, the spaceship takes 4.25 light years according to a clock on the spaceship. Okay, so this is 4.25 light years time period. This is actually a very easy problem. You see, it's actually very easy if you just keep in mind that we are doing all the calculations with respect to a fixed observer. You decide whether you want to look at the calculations from the perspective of an Earth observer or whether you want to look at the calculations from the perspective of a spaceship observer. But whichever observer you choose, you perform those calculations according to that observer. So for example, since the question asks the speed, the spaceship, what is speed? Speed is nothing but, speed we can say as V, is nothing but distance upon time. Now this is where the important point comes in. All the variables must be with respect to that observer only. That means the distance I measure should be with respect to Earth and the time I measure should also be with respect to Earth. Similarly, if I do the calculations of speed with respect to the spaceship, then here also I will apply the same expression, which is distance upon time. The only important thing is that I make the measurements of distance with respect to the spaceship and I make the measurements of time with respect to the spaceship. If I keep this in mind that whenever I'm doing calculations, I make sure that I'm making the measurements with respect to one fixed observer, then I'll get the final answer to be correct. But what is the difference between these two approaches? The difference is that in one approach, length contraction is happening. In the other approach, time dilation is happening. When you look at the whole phenomena of motion with respect to the spaceship, with respect to an observer in the spaceship, for him, the distance appears to contract. So it is a length contraction. So the phenomena happening here is a phenomena of length contraction. But if you look at the same phenomena of a rocket going from the Earth to the distant star with the perspective of an Earth, the phenomena that is happening is time dilation. You see the clock with respect to which the spaceship takes 4.25 years, that clock and another clock in the hands of an Earth observer are not ticking at the same rate. So with respect to an observer on Earth, his clock will tick at a different rate. So his time period and his time period for the same event of spaceship going from Earth to distant star is going to be different. So the phenomena that we have here is the phenomena of time dilation. Can you see the difference in both these two approaches? The only difference is the observer. For the Earth, time dilation is happening. For the spaceship, length contraction is happening. So I can calculate the speed of the spaceship with respect to the spaceship and also with respect to the Earth. How do I do that? Just plug in the values here. So speed, if I say, if I say that the speed is nothing but V, so V is equal to distance. What is distance? Distance is 4.25 light years, so 4.25 C. What is time? As I just now told you, the time measured by the Earth for the spaceship to complete the journey and the time measured by the spaceship for the spaceship to complete the journey are not the same. They are related by the time dilation expression. So if there is a clock in the spaceship which is ticking at a particular rate and this clock is moving with a particular velocity, you know, which is V, then the time period which it measures, if I call it as del T naught, then with respect to del T naught, there is going to be an equivalent time period with respect to the Earth, the dilated time period, which is basically given as del T is equal to del T naught upon root over 1 minus V square upon C square. So if I plug this in here, this simply is nothing but del T naught is 4.25 years divided by root over 1 minus v square upon c square. So 4.25 and this one gets cancelled and here I end up getting or v upon c, v upon c is equal to root over 1 minus v square upon c square. If I complete this calculation, so v square upon c square is equal to 1 minus v square upon c square or if I bring this to the left hand side, 
twice v square upon c square is equal to 1 or I have v is equal to c square upon 2 root over so root over c upon rather I have root over c square upon 2 so this is c upon root 2. So the speed of the spaceship according to the earth is c upon root 2 which is not the speed of light it is less than the speed of light. Similarly if I perform the length contraction calculations with respect to the spaceship then I can say that v is equal to distance with respect to the spaceship is what? Contracted distance. Yeah, what is the contracted distance? The contracted distance is given by del L is equal to del L naught into root over 1 minus v square upon c square. So the contracted distance is simply equal to del L naught which is 4.25 light years multiplied by root over 1 minus v square upon c square divided by the time period which is 4.25. So upon 1.4.25, so this gets cancelled and finally I am left with V, so there should be a C here because the distance is 4.25 light years. So therefore V upon C is equal to root over 1 minus V square upon C square. This becomes V square upon C square is equal to 1 minus V square upon C square. Same expression I have here. So if I bring this to the left hand side twice V square upon C square is equal to 1. So that gives me finally V is equal to C upon root 2. So the speed of the spaceship according to the observer in the spaceship is also c upon root 2. So in both the situations, for an observer in earth, the speed of the spaceship is this. For an observer inside the spaceship, his speed as he goes from point A to point B is also the same. But the phenomena that they are experiencing are time dilation and length contraction respectively. So I hope this video makes it clear when to apply time dilation and when to apply length contraction. You see, both may be happening or both may be arising in a particular situation, but with respect to two different or two distinct observers. So this was an interesting question. That's it for today. Thank you very much, guys.